Hello, this video is about what I call flight sequences or photo stitching. It's just appeared in a previous video that should be uploaded about a barn owl. Now, the thing is, is when you're in watching wildlife with wildlife, it's hard to decide whether you have time to video the subject and to photograph the subject. So sometimes you've got time for both, but with wildlife being unpredictable, I personally choose to photograph it and then if it sticks around, video it afterwards, just as long as I've got my shots. So when there isn't video footage of the, say, in this case, the owl, it's still nice to try and convey and show the action you experienced and to do that a good way to do it is to photo stitch and make a sequence of the birds actually in flight I've got some examples here let's bring it up on here This is of a barn owl fly in flight, hunting. It's, it's, uh, there's going to be lots of barn owls. I'm, I'm owl mad. Again, flying past. Oops. Go back. It's a short-eared owl in flight. A barn owl diving. Now this example. I don't know if you can see, but it's, it's quite heavily noisy. So the fact that it's noisy, I didn't want to crop the photo. It's just shows so much noise. So in this instance, I, to salvage anything from the evening, I took, did a multiple shot of it um, diving down. It's a kestrel. Barn owl again, barn owl diving, marsh harrier, and a cormorant. And this is possibly the photo that was featured in the last video of a barn owl carrying its bowl back to its nest. So they're the type of photos on going to be explaining today basically how you do it so now we come to the tricky part we go into Lightroom let's load that up And I've got some photos as examples of the shorted owls. We're going to import them. Just wait for the Lightroom to respond. Right. I'm going to import the files I want to make a flight sequence of in my desktop let's have a look flight sequence no flight sequence images here we go so we import these this is the first I'm going to call it the first action. You have to have all your images at the same exposure. So you start with the first one, go into develop. Now I'm not going to be cropping them. I'm just literally going to get them to the right
exposure that I want. This will just be a rough. edit just to show you guys and mask out the sharpening um, and matters but in this case I'm just going to put in a little bit of noise reduction right that one's done now for me personally when I'm happy with it I press the library take it back and then I go to development settings copy the settings of that image copy that one and then when I go back into the other ones I can paste the same settings for each photo as so right so now all my photos are exactly the same exposure we then want to export them folder right so all of those photos are going to be exported there's eight in total now I'm going to choose this one make a virtual copy of this one how do we do that create virtual copy create a virtual copy of that And for my background picture, I'm going to take out this bird by pressing the heel button there. So I'm going to select an area for me to um, heal it with. have to be too precise because the actual owls are coming on so let's have a look at that so that's perfect so this then will be exported and I'm going to rename that I'm going to click in the file rename and I'm going to rename that as the background for the photo stitch slash flight sequence so that's being exported now right take that away now <coughs> you can now either go into Photoshop and import the images as layers and then mask around the birds and insert them however you like. Um, I personally don't use Photoshop as much as I could so for me I use a 
program called paint.net it's on micro you can get it in the microsoft store so i'm gonna i'm just gonna show you my way and um i think it's easier but you'll obviously find your own preferences at some point so we start with the background image I'm going to resize that slightly bigger to make sure that all the birds are going to fit in so I'm going to resize that image like that I'm also going to then go in blur it slightly to take out any noise and so it's the background so that is that is my actual background that I'm going to base the photo on so then I want to open number one I've renamed them all I'm going to get the bird like that draw a board around it copy and then I'm going to press edit and I'm going to paste it into a new layer I'm pretty sure similar on Photoshop but then I as you can see I'm aligning up to where I want the bird and then I'm going to open number two and do exactly the same draw a board around it copy it pop it into there as a new layer I'm going to bring it up like that get the delete mouse button bit Now we can get away we can get all this away in a second. Just doing a rough. Rough delete. Let's get number three. Edit, copy, pop it in there. Now these are all on separate layers, so you can adjust them to where you want them. Number four, easy thing to draw around it, copy it, pop it in there. You can crop the original picture once they're all in place, almost like a panorama. Pano. There we go. All right, I'm gonna take away the background for a second by unclicking it so it's not visible we're going to go to the first bird layer 2 and we're going to press the magic wand we're going to see if we can take away
of the background like that and then you cut it away there you muck about with the tolerance now if it's on a blue sky this is a lot lot quicker on a blue sky Take away all of that, get your eraser, it's called razor rubber, and take away what they didn't manage to pick up on. can have the background visible or not visible depending on the subject you don't necessarily have to get rid of much at all I, silly for me I chose an awkward background but there we go so use the wand and then go over the loose bits with the rubber. Don't worry about hitting the other layer, it doesn't affect it. Okay, you can use the erase the wand again, cut some more of that away. tolerance thing there we go so that is basically how I photo stitch I do believe there's a wand or something on the same lines in Photoshop. There's also a program that you can use to develop your panorama image in the first place called Microsoft Ice. You can do exactly the same by um, developing the photos in Lightroom and then you import them into the micro Microsoft Ice and make a panorama to begin with but then you'll still need to either go into Photoshop or paint.net and insert the birds like so and basically there you have it is a flight sequence arrange them accordingly and you can show or convey the action that you had hope this helps if there's any questions on how i've done it then um, please comment in the comment section below hope you enjoyed the previous video where this idea came from <laughs>